Time to get started. So if you can start wrapping up your conversations and take a seat, that would be lovely. Okay, so uh, we're gonna. I'll start by introducing myself. So my name is Vanessa Fiore. I've been volunteering with CCL for eight years now, since I was 16. Um, and I'm gonna be your MC for today and this morning. So, je... um, donc je vais juste commencer en français um, et j'aimerais donner une appréciation à tous ceux et celles qui sont venus aujourd'hui um, à cet événement et cet déjeuner. Um, pour en je m'excuse. Um, pour en discuter, la transition du secteur d'électricité en Ontario, or transforming Ontario's electricity sector. So, j'aimerais d'abord donner un gros, gros merci à député Jamie West uh, pour sa participation et son leadership dans l'organisation de cet événement, um, et justement son soutien en général de Citizens Climate Lobby et l'action climatique. Um, J'aimerais aussi remercier tous les partenaires qui ont contribué leur voix et leur temps à, cette, à organiser cet événement, um, incluant the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment, for our grandchildren, Ontario Climate Emergency Campaign, Climate Fast, and of course CCL. Uh, finalement, j'aimerais remercier tous les députés qui sont venus aujourd'hui et qui viendront au cours de l'événement et pour votre volonté de rencontrer les citoyens um, et en discuter le changement climatique avec nous. So, thank you all so much for coming tonight and for dedicating your time to this. So, I'll start by giving a land acknowledgement. So, we'd like to begin our gathering today by acknowledging that we work, that the work we support stretches across the homes of many First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples on Turtle Island and that indigenous knowledge and honoring of all treaties must be significantly incorporated as part of meaningful action on the climate crisis. We acknowledge that indigenous peoples are traditional owners and custodians of this land, and that for decades, they have been the first line of defense against the climate breakdown. For example, indigenous resistance has stopped at least 1.8 billion metric tons of greenhouse gas pollution on Turtle Island, um, and this is the land of the Anishinaabe peoples. Um, so, we're going to have two of our speakers come up and give a little presentation. Um, and then after that, we're going to be meeting with the MPPs that um, have so graciously came today to have conversations with us. So, I'm going to start by first introducing Zoe Curie Matzner. She's our first speaker, and she's a high school student uh, and Fridays for Future Youth from Toronto. So, Zoe, please come up. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Zoe. I'm a grade 12 student at Bloor Collegiate Institute, um, which is pretty close by. Um, I'm also a member of Fridays for Future Toronto, which is a youth climate organization that organizes climate strikes. So four years ago, I spoke at a citizen's climate lobby breakfast, um, just like this one. Um, I was 12 years old, and now I'm 16. Um, in those four years, I've seen the climate crisis worsen. Um, the climate crisis is impacting people all around the world, from devastating heat waves in Europe, to droughts causing massive famines in the Horn of Africa, to recently flooding in Libya, that has leaving over 10,000 people missing or dead, and the death toll is climbing. And it's impacting people here in Ontario too. Um, this past summer, as you know, our sky is filled with smoke from wildfires burning across Canada, um, making our air at times dangerous to breathe. And everywhere it is low-income families, indigenous and racialized communities, um, the most vulnerable, so seniors and children, who are being impacted the most. And while the climate crisis has worsened, the public has become more aware and more and more people want their governments to take serious action. So that's why I'm here today, to urge you to take action. Um, we know the window for climate action is narrowing. Scientists from the UN say we have to cut our emissions in half by 2030 to avoid irreversible climate cat catastrophe, after which um, the effects become accelerated and it's impossible to get back from. 
So this is the decade for climate action, and these are the most critical years we'll ever have for taking the action required to, prefer, to preserve a safe climate future, and we must all play our part. So as a young person looking to the future, I'm here to ask you to accelerate effort, efforts to reduce the emissions that are destabilizing the world's climate systems. And more specifically, I'm here to ask you to put a pause on the current plans to expand methane-fired power, methane -fired power plants. At such a late stage in the climate crisis, we need to be transitioning off of fossil fuels like methane gas um, and not ramping them up. So the good news is that we can. Uh, as several studies have shown, we can do this by ramping up clean, local renewable energy, by using heat pumps in our homes and buildings, by investing in energy efficiency. Um, these actions would reduce harmful pollution, um, increase local climate resilience, and generate jobs for young people like me in a thriving green economy. So let's get this right. Planning Ontario's energy future will have far-reaching consequences for young people like me in Ontario and around the world. I can't vote yet, but I can speak. So I'm here today to ask that when you make these big decisions, consider what they'll mean for the young people in your lives and the young people across Ontario. To put this another way, this is a very important assignment, and as my teachers would say, it is important to do your homework thoroughly. So in this case, please put, uh, please put a pause on the plans for methane power plants. Take a step back, do the research, then revise and resubmit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Zoe. That was an amazing speech that definitely resonated with me, and that was a beautiful call to action and a great introduction to the themes that we're going to be talking about today with some of our political representatives. So thank you for starting us off. That was amazing. Um, next, I would like to present our next speaker. Her name is Dr. Millie Roy. She is a practicing physician and surgeon in the greater Toronto area. She is assistant professor at the University of Toronto, Department of Ophthalmology, Ophthalmology. <laughs> Thank you. She serves as the Ontario Regional Co-Chair of the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment and as co-chair of the Ontario Climate Emergency Campaign. She is a mother and a physician deeply concerned about the environment for decades while working every day to further human health. Dr. Roy works and advocates increasingly in the intersectional space of planetary health and or planetary health as the need to act has become more urgent. Millie Roy is a member of CAPE and the OCEC, which I already mentioned. <laughs> so well, come on up, Dr. Millie Roy. Thank you so much, Zoe and uh, Vanessa. So <clears throat> thanks to, uh, to our honorable MPPs uh, for being here today and to Zoe for her very powerful words. Um, as we emerge from uh, the, the hottest um, summer uh, ever recorded in human history, triggering the worst wildfires ever in Canadian history, it's undeniable we are in, in a climate crisis. And the climate crisis is widely recognized as the single greatest human and public health crisis of our time. And the single greatest driver is the burning of fossil fuels. This includes gas, which is essentially methane, and now understood to have a carbon intensity comparable to coal, which has previously been considered the dirtiest fuel on the planet. Methane is about 80 times worse than carbon dioxide at producing global heating. The massive health impacts of planetary warming are shown in this Canadian Medical Association poster. And these include the impacts of extreme heat and wildfires, escalating infectious diseases, food and housing insecurity, mental health impacts, 
and illness, injury, and death caused by extreme weather. We all know about the 2021 BC heat dome, which killed over 600 people, particularly seniors and the economically disadvantaged. And this was the single deadliest uh, weather event in Canadian history. The very next day, the entire town of Lytton, BC, primarily Indigenous, burned to the ground with the hottest temperatures ever recorded in Canada of nearly 50 degrees Celsius. So what does a warming climate do to our, our other facets of life? It reduces crop yields, while extreme weather further damages agriculture and housing. This affects food and housing security, which are social determinants of health. Climate change is already amplifying many infectious diseases, such as Lyme disease, but the Canadian Public Health Association warns that Ontario in particular may be at risk of other diseases, such as malaria, yellow fever, Zika, and dengue fever, among others in the future. And in fact, recent research is showing us that over 50%, about 60% of all human pathogenic diseases are worsened or aggravated by climate change which in addition increases the risk of pandemics, which we now know too well, and has been shown to increase antibiotic resistance. The mental health impacts of climate, uh, the climate crisis are devastating and require their, their own discussion. These disproportionately affect our youth, who did the least to create the crisis. Uh, a recent study of 10,000 youth around the world found that nearly half of youth feel climate anxiety is affecting their daily lives and ability to function. Nearly half are hesitant to have children themselves. And over half, and this is one for, for our elected officials in the room, over half said that their governments are betraying them and future generations. And this should really give us some pause for thought. If this weren't enough, the burning of methane gas also creates lethal air pollution, which currently kills 8 million people prematurely around the world, including 7,000 Ontarians every single year. Breathing polluted air causes diseases of multiple body systems, and this ranges from asthma, heart disease, diabetes and dementia, to pregnancy-related harms such as low birth weight babies and multiple types of cancer. And we have some, some very interesting data modeling for the health impacts of gas-fired electricity alone, no other forms of gas, for the City of Toronto in 2019. And this showed that over 1,300 children suffered asthma as a result. Almost 10,000 sick days were incurred amongst workers, and 215 people died prematurely losing over 3,000 years of life in that one single year. So it's clear we must urgently reduce fossil fuel use in Ontario in order to reduce the staggering health harms. In light of multiple evidence-based report, expert reports, we request the government of Ontario to pause the expansion of methane-fired electricity, incorporate municipal net zero plans, evaluate clean renewable energy, storage, and conservation solutions. These would yield massive public health benefits as well as economic co-benefits. Renewable energy sources are now cheaper than any fossil fuel. Clean energy will also avert the massive fossil fuel-driven human health and public infrastructure damage costs. Climate change will cost Ontario about $1.5 billion extra every year just to maintain public transport infrastructure. And our economy loses around $50 billion every year to premature death caused by air pollution. All these numbers have been worked out. We also know that every dollar invested in the clean energy sector generates a few times more jobs than the same investment in, in a gas plant. So in a province where we can be so proud to have gotten off coal, Let's not have those hard-won gains erased by gas expansion. We look to you as our elected officials to safeguard a clean electricity grid by pausing gas-fired electricity expansion. We ask you to recognize the climate crisis as the urgent public health crisis it is and act urgently in the public interest. Thank you so much.
Dr. Millie, that was super informative. Um, and I think a really important message to take away is, and I think it's something that we tend to forget a lot of the times, but human health is very much interconnected with environmental health and you can't have one without the other. And that's obviously a big issue that concerns all of us, right? And, and our political representatives and citizens alike. So um, really great presentation and really amazing takeaways and things to consider, especially con you know, considering how we're gonna move forward in the electricity transition here in Ontario. Um, and even me personally, a little backstory, I, um, I'm a project manager at a EV company based in Quebec. Um, and seeing how our buses reduce the amount of particulate matter amongst students in elementary school and high school, it's something that's made a really big difference and parents really appreciate in Quebec. And we find that there's a lot of barriers to entry in Ontario just financially given the political landscape. So I think it's something that really needs to be taken into consideration. That was a really great talk. So now we're getting into the more interactive portion of the conference. So. I'm just going to have the MPPs and the staffers, would, would you guys like to raise your hands? We're, okay, perfect. So I think we can, yes, round of applause. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. So um, we do have people, some of our volunteers who are assigned to engage in conversations with you. So if we can just kind of spread out across the room, um, if you want to raise your hands again and then people come and join you and start conversations. Sure. 